So any word when your 13th Colonies barrel pick is coming out, barrel craft is $89. I don't love this at $89, 50 bucks, that's a pretty good bottle. Um, I don't know, but so we, we've got the short barrels. The short barrel, these barrels are dropping tomorrow for patrons. So we've got a video coming out in the morning of our experience going to do this barrel pick. And then um, these are going to release two patrons starting at five o'clock central time. And then every 20 minutes, they're gonna move to a different patron tier until they eventually go to the free tier and then Discord and the mailing list and for, for anybody that wants to gain access to it. So they'll just be opened up to the public if there are any left at that point. Um, the 13th Colonies, I, I haven't heard that it's left their facility yet. So um, we've got those and the Ben Holidays that are in some stage of transit, right? They go to a distributor, the distributor holds them for a little while, then gives them to the store. We don't know any day now is, is kind of what our thinking is. So we're hoping we can drop these this week and in two weeks we have another one, whether it's the 13th, whether it's the holiday, but like we just, we just don't, like you just don't know. Once you buy them, you just don't know until they show up. That's the problem. We need more Crittentons. Well, I, I had a conversation. I was over in uh, Mississippi at Spillway the other day, and I had a conversation with Matt about doing more stuff. So I, I know we'll be doing more stuff. And I may I may try to get some stuff going. Like, what do y'all want to see from them? Because he's pretty much open to any crazy experiments we want to do. J-Rock's mad at me because of the tater sticker. Thanks, Grizzly Pig, for just jabbing it a little bit. It was just too late. Like, I was gone all last week. We just couldn't get them printed in time, and the, and the bottles had to go out. Like we, we looked at having them printed and they just were gonna get here like a week from now and it just wasn't gonna work. We weren't gonna have delays like we had on the last picks. We, we can't, can't deal with it. But we're gonna be planning ahead. J-Rock's gonna come on another pick, guaranteed. I reached out to Redwood to try to do a barrel pick and they, like I said, their barrel pick program is coming up next year. But what they did say is they have their limited release cask strength coming out of this pipe dream right here and they are willing to allocate us 200 bottles. Now they're shipping it out of a retailer in California. They're only gonna to ship to like 25 or 30 states. So not everybody will be able to ship them. But if y'all are interested, Friday, we are going to open up on Patreon access to these. Now we don't make any money on this. We don't, like we're not taking a commission. We're not doing anything like that. We've got no commitment whatsoever. So if we sell 10, if we sell 200, doesn't matter to me. Like it, it really doesn't matter. I just thought it would be cool because this is kind of hard to come by, this pipe dream cash strength. And if you're interested in one, we're gonna open it up. They're gonna open it up, give us access. We'll post the code to all of Patreon, all at the same time. And whoever wants one can go grab one and have it shipped to them. Uh, I'm still waiting on the price. We'll have details before Friday, but I just, just got back from, I was out of town last week and some of that stuff's been uh, been bouncing around. But I, I just thought it was cool to give y'all access, right? They're like, we can't do a barrel pick, but we can give folks access to some to our limited release that's about to come out. And this is a week before it comes out anywhere else. So they're gonna drop it this Friday for us, and then next week, I think it'll be available for more people. And we're about to try it right here, Nick. We are about to try it. I don't think I've ever had the pipe dream. I've had the grizzly beast, I've had the... Um, Lost Monarch, I've never had the pipe dream. I'm always trying to challenge your adulting responsibilities, Richard, because this is Friday, but these drop tomorrow. Hmm. Oh, that's really good. Oof, man. That's interesting. Nice and soft and sweet and complex. Great mouthfeel to it. Not a ton of oakiness. A lot of fruit. A lot of apricot on the middle of the palate to me on that. Nice soft oakiness all the way through. I think that's a really nice bottle of whiskey right there. So we'll have pricing, we'll have everything. Like it should be MSRP. Like you're buying it straight from Redwood. They just have a retailer actually ship it out. We're not marking it up. Like, like I said, literally, they just said they can make them available. We said that would be cool that y'all would appreciate that. And so, just be, you know, even if you're not a patron, just join the free patron. So go to, you know, patron.com forward slash bruzel, sign up for the free patron tier, and you should be able to score yourself one of those on Friday. 
What's the proof? The proof on this is, Lord have mercy, they have a dark brown wrap, a dark brown label, and they're using black print on it. So how, like, how is a normal person supposed to read this? It's 58.4% alcohol by volume. So what's that, 116.8, I believe? 116.8 pipe dream. Is it up on the neck of the bottle too? Oh, we bringing your logic in on this? Well, oh, this is good. I like this bottle. This is my favorite Redwood that I've had. I like the Lost Monarch. I like the Grizzly Beast. This one is much sweeter, much more fruit forward for me. Does it remind you of anything? Oh, what would it remind me of that you've had? It actually reminds me a little bit of the Barrel Craft Spirits pick we did last year. I don't think I like it quite as much as that. Um, it's not quite as complex as that one is. What would it remind? I don't know, man. I'm trying to think of what it would remind me of that maybe y'all have had. Just delicious. So we sent out, for everybody that ordered the rum, uh, the rum barrel pick, that's the first one we tater stickered, but the tater stickers were not printed until after the bottles had shipped out. So again, we were not gonna repeat that because I I had to spend, what it cost me $2 a sticker just to have them printed and shipped to everybody. So that's like four or $500 just to get tater stickers. So we're gonna have to plan ahead because they're gonna have to be at the retailer to apply them to the bottles before they get shipped out. It's the only way we're gonna do it from now on. Let's get started on some of these. Should we, should we do these? Is this what we should do? We should try the barrel picks? All right, y'all let me know in the chat. We're gonna go, so we've got a six-year-old, This th we got three, three barrels. We've got a six-year-old Knob Creek. We've got a cask strength toasted, which the only place you could get cask strength toasted is from our barrel pick right now. And then we've got a rye, and I think it's a four and a half year Green River rye. So which one do we start with? Let's save the rye. Let's, I think we should save the rye to the end. Cause that's the one, y'all see these two are open. I, we tried these, I wanna say on a stream or something. I've had a sample. It's been a minute though. I don't remember what they taste like. But the rye is the only one I have not tried since that night. Let's start with whatever this one is. I don't even know what it is. Toasted barrel. So this is a cask strength toasted barrel right here. Give y'all a little bit of a close up. You got the other way. You got the brusel sticker right there. Toasted barrel cask strength. Normally these are gonna be 101 proof. This one is 118.5 proof. So quite a bit hotter than the 101 you're normally gonna get on the shelf with toasted barrel. With a short barrel, toasted barrel anyway. Yeah, as I said, I had something in that one. What a fresh blend. All right, so this one is an apricot bomb. If it's what I remember, it is just apricot for days to my palate. Like that is all I taste is just like pureed apricots and alcohol, which I surprisingly I like. Like I would never just sit down and eat an apricot, but apparently if you put it in some alcohol, I like it. They're newer or like 94 proof, yeah. Oh, this, yeah, this one's got a great color to it. A little bit of oak. I got a little bit of oak up front and then just fruit for days. Just fruit for days, man. God almighty knows. So some toasted barrels, I like some toasted barrels, some toasted barrels I don't. If you would have handed this to me, I'd have said, okay, maybe that's a toasted barrel, but what else did they do to get all those apricot flavors? Because this is much, toasted barrels typically have a little bit of like a bitter oakiness to them, just a touch, like a Michter's toasted barrel. Had some of that last week. Great, love it, but there's a little bit of that bitter oak that lets you know, okay, this is, you know, this has been in some sort of secondary oak container. This one is just much more fruit. Like you get that up front, you get that extra oak up front, but then it's just fruit, which is just unusual. I've never had another toasted barrel like it, but they did a really, really good job with these. Like I said, these will be for sale tomorrow at five o'clock central time. We will start dropping these to the highest tier patrons and every 20 minutes, it will be opened up to a new patron tier until they're all exhausted. 
Um, and I don't know exact barrel, like exact bottle numbers or like counts that we'll have for sale, but I want to say like we're approaching $200 or $200, 200 bottles, not $200, 200 bottles of each. Like we're approaching that. So it's a, uh, it's well on into the hundreds of bottles for each of these that they'll be available. So what is a toasted barrel? Uh, typically what they're going to do with a toasted barrel is the whiskey is going to be aged like it would normally be aged, right? It's gonna be put in a barrel, it's gonna sit there for years, and then some people may take a new barrel and toast it. What a lot of folks will do is take, um, or they'll buy a barrel from a cooper where they took a, a used bourbon barrel and they scraped all the char out of it. So they scraped all that alligator char out of the barrel and then they toasted the wood and then they put this in that toasted barrel and let it sit for however long they let it sit, right? Some folks for a little while, some folks for a long while, and then they, they take it out. So really it's just bourbon that has been finished in a toasted oak barrel. And some will do like a, a normal barrel with a toasted head. Some will do a full toasted barrel. Um, I don't recall exactly what their process here is at short barrel, but whatever it is, that's how people should be toasting things. Uh, so like I said, Alex, these will start dropping at 5 p.m. Central to patrons to the highest tier. And then every 20 minutes, it'll open up to a different tier um, throughout. And then at the end of that, once we're through all the tiers, it'll be opened up to the general public. Like once it passes the free tier, it'll go to the newsletter, it'll go to Discord if there are any left, and then it'll just be open for everybody. So we'll rip the password protection off of it. I don't know the source on the toasted. They've got a lot of words on the back that I can't read because, you know, eyes are blurry. And uh, I don't know, I might need, I might actually have to go get some glasses or something, but I'm, I'm holding out to the last minute. And it is dark. And it, in my defense, it is dark, but it used to be dark. When I started this stream, it was dark and I, I couldn't see it. Now it's dark and a little blurry. So don't tell Jill that. Nobody tell Jill. I think Short Barrel does toasted heads for a minimum of 45 days. I think you're, I, I was gonna, Here's the problem with that. That's what I remember as well, J-Rock, but I can't say things like that because I'm just not sure. And then everybody's like, you're wrong. And as, you know, maybe I heard that here, maybe I heard it there, maybe I just misremembered. So unless I'm fairly confident, I just try not to say things, but J-Rock thinks they do toasted barrel heads for a minimum of 45 days. Uh, I have not mentioned the pricing. Um, I've been dropping it in Discord. Somebody mentioned the pricing here. I think we've already released what the pricing is going to be in Discord, right? So somebody, somebody that has that, pull up the pricing for me, refresh my memory. I just came back from Vegas and straight into this live stream pretty much today. So I'm a little behind. 80 bucks, okay. So they're going to be 80 bucks. And honestly, that's just a bottle you're not going to get anywhere else. Like you're just not going to get a cash strength toasted barrel from short barrel anywhere else right now. So $79.99 for that one. And that that is hard to beat right there. I mean, and, and so we're putting all of these at MSRP. Everyone, like we didn't mark it up over MSRP at all. Whatever their suggested retail price was is exactly what we're selling them for. All right, so we're going to do, this is the six-year-old Knob Creek barrel right here. Short barrel chug. Uh, we don't chug things here. We enjoy our whiskey. Now this one is much more subtle than the toasted. Like that toasted is just in your face with what it's got going on. This one here is 115.2 proof. Like I said, six year old Knob Creek barrel. Uh, in the video, we call it the Jim Beam barrel. I mean, Jim Beam obviously owns Knob Creek. But when I went back over to Short Barrel and we were talking about it, they're like, yeah, the Knob Creek barrel. It's like, what are you talking about? We bought a Jim Beam barrel. They're like, no, that was a Knob Creek barrel. I mean, the DSP on top, on the, the head of the barrel is different for Knob Creek, and it was indeed a Knob Creek barrel. That is a really, really nice bottle of Knob Creek, though. But it is, I mean, I get it. You're buying a bottle of Knob Creek, right? You can get a 12-year-old Knob Creek for cheaper than you can buy that right there. But that is a very interesting, can you get a Knob Creek single barrel for cheaper than you buy that one right there? Probably not. Foolproof was solid too, you're right. So Frank, they go on sale five o'clock tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, the video drops of these and then um, at five o'clock central, five o'clock central time, six o'clock Eastern, these go on sale to the top, 
you know, tier patron, and every 20 minutes they move down. So we will we will announce all this on Patreon, so you should be fully aware of when they're gonna drop for your tier. So what is different about Knob Creek? Knob Creek is gonna be like a high-end Jim Beam product. So it's got that interesting caramel nuttiness, like there's almost a little bit of nuttiness on it there, a uh, little bit of spice, a little rye spice on it. Like Jim Beam is interesting. I don't like just normal Jim Beam. I mean, as a mixer, it's fine, but it's not anything I would ever uh, drink neat. But stuff, they're limited release stuff. They're really old stuff. They're bookers, they're little books. They're just really interesting. Now you've gotta be into that kind of spicy, nutty, sometimes earthiness that comes with a an aged, an aged Jim, damn choking on my own spit there, an aged Jim Beam product. But uh, this pick here, again, is 115.2 proof. I'll give y'all a little close up on the bottle there. Got the uh, Brusel sticker right there. And then I got a bunch of words on the back and I can't read those words. If y'all can read those words, just pause it. You can read the words. You can tell me what the words say. I don't know what the words say. Uh, Kristen with the $5 super chat. Appreciate the support. JL really wants to know, what does this mean by Knob Creek? Does Short Barrel make this in Knob Creek? No, okay, so distilleries oftentimes, like, they make a lot of whiskey, right? Like Knob Creek, Jim Beam, all these places make a ton of whiskey. More whiskey than they can sell. And sometimes they sit on it, sometimes they experiment with it. Sometimes if they pull it and it's off profile, or if they just have way too much, they will sell those barrels. So, or they may make, somebody may have it, you know, have a relationship to have it contract distilled at a distillery. Um, there's lots of reasons why distilleries sell barrels, but lots of times they will indeed sell them. So you can go to a broker or you might have a relationship directly and they somehow acquired a bunch of Knob Creek barrels. And so it's whiskey made by Knob Creek, the Knob Creek distillery made by Jim Beam and then sold, right? And so they can't put a Knob Creek label on it. I don't even know if legally they can say that this has Knob Creek juice in it. I can, because I saw the barrels. I can say anything I want. Um, but it's that is a Knob Creek barrel of whiskey. Now, the thing is, is what makes whiskey special oftentimes is where it's aged as much as what's in the barrel. Um, you know, how it's aged, where it's aged, the conditions it was, it was subject to. So I don't know if this barrel spent six years at Knob Creek and then got sold and they ended up with it. I don't know if it was made and spent a year there and they kicked it out and somebody bought it and it's been aging in Georgia for five years. Like you just don't really know uh, what that barrel's been through, but I know that Knob Creek made it and it is the same whiskey that would have been in a Knob Creek, you know, nine release, 12 release, any of those, but for some reason or another, that barrel got sold instead. So with that, you know, and it's a single barrel, so you can get some uniqueness. Like, we need to try, I'm gonna try this versus the youngest Knob Creek I have. I wanna see how this stacks up to some Knob Creek. I think I've got some back here. Here's a nine, 110 proof. What proof is ours? What do we say, 115? Let's do that. We're gonna try that versus 110 proof Knob Creek nine. Which is, this is dangerous for me to do. Because what is this bottle? Y'all tell me what this bottle costs. Probably cheaper than we're selling our single barrel for. Uh, Jacob, the toasted is fantastic. Like that's, it's so good. It's so different than anything else out there. It's just like apricot and oak. Okay, so I forget which one I poured. I think this is ours and this is the Knob Creek 9. That's good, that, the Knob Creek 9 is so good. Ours is on par with it. It's on par with it. I don't know if it's significantly better, but it's also 100, like this is 120 proof. That helps it a little bit, but they're very similar. I think this one is a little sweeter. Not quite as nutty. And that one's, yeah, a little nutty, not quite as sweet. So a little subtle difference, but I wouldn't have, other than maybe the nuttiness coming from a little more age, I wouldn't have said those have a significant difference in age. 
Ooh, God, that smells so, ooh, my God. This is the only one I haven't had since that day. And it's funny because like, if I talk to folks like, um, like Spillway, like the folks at Spillway, love those guys. But you talk to people who own liquor stores and ryes don't sell. So they're afraid of ryes. They don't wanna buy a lot of ryes because it's hard to convince people to try ryes. But some of the better picks we've done have been ryes. And that right there is just beautiful on the nose. So like people are just afraid of rice. They just don't know what they are, right? People are bourbon drinkers, they want bourbon. And so unless you're pouring samples, they just don't, like if you pour them a sample of a rye, they, they, might, they might take it, but they just don't know. So with bourbon, it's gonna be 51% corn. And on a rye, it's gonna be, you know, the predominant grain is rye. It doesn't meet that like corn requirement of 51%. But this one smells like spicy, a little bit of herbal, just like a nice caramel spiciness to it. God, that is just beautiful. That, that's one of the better rides I own. That is one of the better rides I own. It doesn't have the heat. What's the proof on this? 118 proof. How does it not have the heat? Like it does not drink like it's that hot. Like normally, like the, the Michter's barrel strength rise, just, it just, it's got some heat to it, right? You really feel the burn on those. This one, caramel forward, easily approachable. On the mid palate, the rye starts to develop and it leaves you with just a nice kind of herbal rye finish. Um, nice complexity to it like just a really beautifully crafted rye. This is a four and a half year old rye. I can't imagine how good Green River's ryes are gonna be once they're six, seven, eight years old. I, see, I don't even have the cut, the cut above rye pick, Tommy, that's the problem, is I don't even have it. So we shipped all those to New York. Every one of them went to New York and we were holding them. We had so many problems with shipping because we were combining orders and we had two or three barrel picks going out together. And so I just told them to hold them all in case there were problems shipping and we would have some backup bottles. And so I have not tried that one since we filmed that video. So I, I can't compare it to that one. Can't even compare it. Now that's a rum finished rye, whereas this is just a straight up rye. Like this one's not finished in anything. Um, so the straight up rye is kind of interesting because it you know, has no additive flavors like that rum finish is gonna be. So a rye isn't considered bourbon. No, this is not a bourbon. This is a rye whiskey, uh, straight rye whiskey. Somebody tell me what straight rye means. I don't know. Y'all educate me. That's a good rye. That is uh, like, it's not, it's not the Mictor's Barrel Strength rye. It's not the limited edition rye, but it'll bat with just about any other rye I own. Like I would love to put that one in some blinds for folks because they're like, I really think folks are gonna be surprised by that rye. So how does it compare to the Jack Daniel single barrel barrel proof rise? I think I got one in here somewhere. I don't see it. Uh, it's gonna be in that vein. It's gonna be similar. I think this might have a little more complexity, a little more rye forward. It doesn't drink as hot as those. Like those just tend to feel a little more heat, but like that's, it's, it's probably of that quality, yeah. Mm. So here's the thing, this is a really good rye, really good rye. It does have the only colored brusel sticker there. Let me get you, get you a close up on that. All the other ones are black and white. This one is kind of brown with the gold. That's pretty freaking cool. Don't know why they all didn't look like that one. Uh, if you're, if you're kind of uncertain about ryes, this is a good introduction to rye. Like that's, that's a good rye whiskey. But not everybody's into rye. The Knob Creek is super interesting. Like I, I love this bottle. This is probably my favorite just drinking bottle because I tend to lean more uh, bourbon. So this is just like more quintessential bourbon, right? It's not finished in toast. It's not a rye. This is more bourbon. So I would tend to just say this is probably the bottle that'll get drank first here. But 
The toasted barrel is the most unique of them that you're not gonna get anywhere else, like a cask strength, and they do a really good job toasting. So a cask strength toasted, but at the same time, if you're not into, you know, kind of different things, like this is not middle of the road. This is very toasted apricot finish. So this is probably the most interesting. So if I was buying one, this would probably be the one I would get. Cause like, although this is great, you can get a Knob Creek. You can, you, you can buy Knob Creek somewhere. Um, you can get a really nice rice somewhere because rice are not super hyped. So probably the toasted would be, if I just picked one, probably be the toasted. Still haven't got the rum sticker, Dragon said. They came in envelopes. Everybody, you know, they, they all went out to everybody who bought one. We do have a few extra, so if you don't get it by Friday, let me know. We'll see. It should have, like, Jill hand wrote, she hand wrote like 50 uh, envelopes and sent them out. I was like, babe, well, let's, I just ordered some, some decals, printed them out on the computer, so it's, it's like the Brusel Tater sticker department. Um, so you ought to know what it is. Uh, so BH, we're doing the pick Friday. Um, I don't know when it, like that's the problem with barrel picks. That's the problem we're having. We're learning, we're learning. We're still new to this. Um, we've done what, 15, 16 picks now and they're, some of them are still slowly starting to roll out. But we, um, you do the pick and then you just don't know when it's coming. Like you have no clue. They'll give you a range, but nobody listens to that range. Nobody pays attention to what they told you. As Soon as they tell you that range, it is just in the ether and nobody cares. Duran, so I talked to Blue Note Rep recently. They're pulling back on doing as many barrel picks next year. Oh, that's gonna suck a little bit, but honestly, that's better. Do less of them. Then I, you know, give me one of those you're doing less of. I think if we don't have enough clout to get a Blue Note pick, we're not like we don't have enough clout. Like that's that's gonna be painful. That would hurt my feelings if I don't have enough clout to get a Blue Note pick. To be honest with you, rank your picks. These picks right here. If I had to rank, like, which ones would I buy? Um, the, the, like, the, all of these are really good picks. All of these are good. This one's toasted. This is gonna be the hardest one for you to replicate. This rye right here is a really, really solid rye, and that is a fantastic six-year-old Knob Creek. So they're all good. But if I were just, like, say I could only buy one, I'd buy that one. If I could only buy two, I'd buy those two. And if I could get all three, I would freaking get all three. That's what I would do. Tomorrow we drop the barrel pick of this. So tomorrow morning, so we've got bonus, we got bonus content this month. We might actually have two extra videos this month. We've got the short barrel barrel pick and then any other barrel picks that drop, we've got the video of those, except for the, the Clyde Maze, that video is already out. Um, so this one's dropping tomorrow. And then I think um, Friday, I think it's the South Dakota Sioux Falls. Uh, are the short barrel picks getting released soon? Yes, these are getting released tomorrow. So the video is dropped tomorrow morning. These bottles will be dropped at five o'clock central time to the highest tier patrons. And every 20 minutes, they'll move to a new patron tier until they are released to the public. I made myself a little bit of an old fashioned right here that I've been smoking while I was waiting to get this started. Ooh, fancy, fancy. But man, that's a delicious old fashioned. You've got to see it. It's really visible in person. The camera just doesn't pick it up. And it, I think what it is, is it's actually frosting over here a little bit because I've got a nice cold ice ball in there. Mmm, man, that's good. That's good. Not what I wanted to, I'm, I'm more of a neat sipper. Old fashions give me trouble because it's just sweet. And then I can drink like 10 of them and then it's, then it's out, of, uh, out of hand. What's my favorite old fashioned recipe? I like, um, Demerara, so just use Demerara instead of a simple syrup. A uh, little, you know, a little orange peel, a uh, little um, bitters. I mean, it's pretty simple. I, we did a video on it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to open this. This is the only thing I bought in the last bourbon hunting video that we did. It took a lot of discipline, and this is a, but this is the most I've ever paid for a single beer. This is Barrel Carving Imperial Pumpkin Ale from 2022, and I have to figure out how to get it open now. I, don't, I think my, my bottle opener may have got taken upstairs. I may have to see if I can find another one. Definitely got a knife here. We can make that work. This is the $30 beer, which I, I know is going to be a huge disappointment. There are no beers worth $30. Doesn't exist. Let's see. I got a beer glass over here. 
Let's give her a little try. Of course, this glass is not big enough. This is a massive beer. I'll at least give them that. It's like a half a freaking gallon. It is pumpkin beer, yes. It, it was it was wasteful, but I didn't buy any bottles. I thought I would take a chance here. You want to see, see this up close here. I'll give you all the close-up view. Well, I'll be... That may be the first pumpkin alcohol thing I'm kind of on board with. Not for $30, hell no, not for $30. No, 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 no. But that's actually quite nice. That's a, that's a nice beer. That's pleasant. If that were $10 for a six pack, I'd be all over it. Wouldn't drink more than one at a time, but it is better than Miller High Life. I'm like that's, they did something nice here. So I, I can see why it's elevated, but not like 30 bucks is just a lot of, I don't want, I don't know what it costs to make it, but it's almost two beers for $30. There you go, $15 a piece. I mean, that's in that Goose Island um, bourbon barrel aged stout range, right? So we tried it, pretty good. All right, we're gonna warm up our palate before we get to these. I don't wanna go into these cold and I haven't really drank a lot since last week. Didn't drink much over the weekend, at least not much whiskey. Um, I was in Vegas all last week, so definitely drank a little bit there. But this is Barrel Foundation Bourbon aged five years that they were kind enough to send to us. Um, and I've been liking a lot of the stuff Barrel's been putting out here lately. Uh, which is better, Barrel or Four Roses? It depends. The Barrel Craft Spirits Private Label Blends, two of those I've got beat any Four Roses I have on my, on my bar. Uh, one of them I had did not. So it just, just varies, right? Oh, that's nice. Somebody in the chat, look up this Barrel Foundation. They sent it to us. I don't know what it costs. Look this up and tell me what this goes for. What is a proof of the barrel? This is a hundred proof. $55, okay, 50, $55. Better than Miller High Life in Simmons? Somebody asked that, Omega, so they, they asked if it was better than Miller High Life, so I just, I just agreed. I like this, though. This is just good, simple, flavorful bourbon. It's got a nice oakiness to it, like I would have probably pegged it a little older than five years. Um, Nice mouthfeel to it, 100 proof is perfect. If you like, just kind of a nice, soft, easy sipping, but oaky bourbon, this one's gonna be right up your alley. Man, that, that is, it's not pumpkin. It's just, it is kind of that fall, like spiciness to it, but it's it's not like that over the top pumpkinness. It That's good. What's your go-to bourbon for an old-fashioned? We make a lot of old fashions here with Ancient Ancient Age 10 Star. I keep going back to this beer, man. This is... I thought I would hate that, and I do not. I do not hate that. I would not drink two of them. I would not have two full beers of that, but I would definitely drink one and enjoy it very much. Now, this Eagle Rare is a store pick from somebody, probably Alabama ABC. I think most of my store picks are um, of that, and Beach Sand's gonna have one with me here. So, yeah, this is Alabama ABC, which the Eagle Rare is one of those store picks that is usually quite a bit better than Eagle Rare. Like, people can pick one that's either a little more fruit forward or a little more oaky, um, so they could be really interesting. Man, like, come on. That's just candy, man. It's just can't, this one is a little more oak forward than a normal Eagle Rare. So the, the oak is a little harsher. Yeah, this one's not my favorite Eagle Rare. It honestly tastes a little oxidized. I think it's just the oakiness. Um, this one's not my favorite. Uh, I have some, uh, just like normal Eagle Rares, obviously a little better balance than this one. This one is much oakier. I would not have picked this barrel of Eagle Rare. But in general, Eagle Rare is delicious. And that's still delicious. It's just a little harsher on the oak than a normal Eagle Rare would be. 